I haven't always been a very frugal person. I grew up seeing kids my age wearing the newest Jordans, playing the newest gaming consoles, walking around with the latest iPhones, and driving brand new, really nice cars at the age of 16. Now, I didn't have all that stuff, but seeing it on a regular basis subconsciously made me want these things more and more, but it gave me the wrong mindset about money. Whenever I saw something I wanted, I would work to get it every single time. But it led to a cycle of do the work, get the money, spend the money, start back at zero. And that cycle continued and it followed me all the way into adulthood. What I'm saying is before I became as frugal as I am today, I definitely had to learn the hard way. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what I've learned so you don't have to learn it the hard way. When it comes to frugal living, the biggest tip that I can give you by far is to have a persistent mindset. So you know we have this pandemic going on and recently I got quarantined and during that time I did not go anywhere at all. Guess what? That gave me nothing but time to reflect and during that time I could really only think about one thing and one thing only, money. Specifically my current financial situation. I thought about how much money I make every single year. I thought about how much debt I'm in. I thought about how much money I have in all my different bank accounts. I thought about how much money I wanna be making per year in the next couple of years. And I thought about my overall financial goals for the future, you know, that type of thing. And the financial goals that I have for myself boil down to one thing and one thing only, a persistent long-term mindset. And this goes so much deeper than personal finance. This is discipline, self-confidence, and relentlessness all in one. If you're gonna live a frugal life successfully, there's no allowing other people's opinions or ideas of what you should be doing to dictate the decisions that you make for your life. You will be criticized. That's just the nature of the beast. And ever since I've grown and I've learned to make smart, intentional financial decisions, and now that I actually do live a frugal lifestyle, you best believe I get criticism. You'll hear stuff like, man, you never buy yourself anything. Come on, you can afford it. You have the money, you can afford it. Man, you're so tight with money. Good God. Hey, why haven't you bought that new car yet? You got all this money. Or my favorite, you're so cheap. That's my favorite one right there. And you know what? That's where confidence comes into play. A confident, frugal person does not give a crap about what anybody has to say about him or what they have to think about them, period. You know why? Your goals are more important. And I know this is much easier said than done. This is honestly something that I've struggled with in my life, honestly, for most of my life. But trust me, once you really hone in on your goals and you make them your main focus, you will care less and less what people think of you. So you're 20 something years old, you make good money, you wanna save your first $20,000 by the end of the year, and you wanna be able to buy your first house by the age of 25, right? So then you've gotta ask yourself this question, which one is more important, my goals or their opinions? By the way, this is 1,000 times easier if you just surround yourself around the right people. I mean, after all, you are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. Think of it like this, what happens if you put a rotten apple next to a fresh apple? The fresh apple goes bad, right? That's exactly what happens when you're the only frugal person within your group. Eventually their opinions, their tendencies, their spending habits, their wants, their thoughts will become your own. Ask me how I know. It's almost like every time you're going for a goal, it's like the world knows and the world tries to do everything in its power to make sure you don't reach those goals. Have you noticed that? Speaking of which, family and friends will ask you for money. They will ask you to go out with them to eat or they might ask you to go out for drinks. They may even ask you to go out with them to the club. And as much as I've struggled with this in my personal life, I'm here to tell you that the word no is not only a powerful word, but it's also a complete sentence. If you personally can't help somebody out with money, then just tell them no, there's no use in both of you being broke. You got friends who want you to go out with them, but you don't wanna go? Hey, if it wastes your time and your money and you genuinely don't wanna go, tell them no. Oh, you'll get pushback. Don't worry, you're gonna absolutely get pushback, but I'm gonna tell you this. Whenever I had any goal in life, any goal at all, whether it was making straight A's in school or saving up a certain amount of money, I did not let 
anybody, and I mean anybody, get in the way of that. And that's even if I got called lame or boring for making my decision, my adult decision to tell my friends no. I had to come to the realization that my goals are way more important than people pleasing or any form of instant gratification. Maybe hard for you. It's definitely hard for me, but say no. I found that the hardest part about saying no to others is actually saying no to myself. You see, I've always had a big heart and I've always wanted to help as many people as possible. And there came a time when I was just way too nice and I was slowly but surely becoming a people pleaser without even realizing it. And until I realized I can't save everyone, not everyone has the same heart as me, and it's literally impossible to please everybody, that made the ongoing battle of saying no to myself much, much easier and look living a frugal lifestyle is about making changes like constant changes in your life all the time and by changes i mean improvements i'm talking financially relationally and mentally and that's the quality of information you consume that's the quality of people that you have in your life and that's the quality of your decisions Another piece of that is saying no to yourself when it comes to things that you want to buy yourself because you feel like you deserve them. I've been a sneakerhead since I was in elementary school and I love Jordans, I always have. But as more and more money came into my life, I felt more and more responsibility and part of that responsibility was not getting those Jordans anymore. Growing up, I was very heavily into technology and video games. But when I started really making money, it was like a switch that I had to turn off. The, the pleasure and the fun of buying these video games had to be turned off. So for a while, there was no more buying the newest Call of Duty game or buying the newest Mortal Kombat that just got released. And if you know anything about me, you know I love food. And sometimes I'm a man of convenience. Like sometimes I don't want to cook. Sometimes I don't even want to go out to a fast food restaurant. So uh, the thing that I used to do a lot was go to work and hit up those vending machines for some honey buns, any kind of junk food that was up in there. I used to scan my card like it was crazy, like the world was ending or something. I spent a lot of money on overpriced items in the vending machine. So what I started doing was I just started leaving my wallet in my car. At least that way, if I ever wanted to get something, I would have to walk all the way out to my car. Like at work is a pr pretty big place. So I'd have to walk all the way out to my car just to get it. I ain't walking out all the way out there for to, to scan a card. I'm just not. But that's just an example of a way that I gauged how I can stop myself from spending unnecessarily. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm getting at here is those were the internal battles I had to go through. See, this is not so much focusing on money. This is more focusing on you and your intentionality behind the way you think and the way you do things. So yeah, those were my internal battles and no one knew anything about them. Like none of my friends and my family members knew about those battles that I was facing. And it was definitely challenging for me to do, but guess what? But I overcame those challenges and made those improvements in my life because I knew I would have to if I were going to get to where I wanted to be in terms of frugal living. But I'm going to warn you though, as you make these improvements, you're going to feel better and better about yourself to a fault. I know I did. It got to a point where I was stagnant in my financial journey. I wasn't adding on to goals like I should be. And I was, I just wasn't pushing like I have been doing in the past. This was recently, by the way. That said, I had to sit down and ask myself this question, and I'd recommend you to ask yourself this question as well. Are you happy or just comfortable? By happy, I mean accomplished and fulfilled when it comes to your goals. And by comfortable, I mean you're just in a good spot financially. Guess what my answer was? Comfortable. And what instantly came to my mind after that was everyone's comfortable until they're not. And of course that brought a lot of other stuff to my head. And keep in mind, I'm sitting down on my couch in the middle of my quarantine thinking about this stuff. My mind is just going wild right now. And I was just thinking, look at all these people who lost their jobs during this pandemic. Look at everyone who got laid off, furloughed, or got their salaries cut because of this pandemic. I've had neighbors, friends, and even family impacted financially by this pandemic. So as I thought about that, the questions got deeper and scarier, and it came down to these two questions. And these were questions that I asked myself. How many missed paychecks will make you feel uncomfortable? How many missed paychecks will make you go into survival mode? These are real questions we need to sit down and actually ask ourselves in all seriousness. 
And the whole idea and the whole point behind this is someone who is frugal is always going to be striving for the next financial goal, no matter what. They're not just going to get to where they want to be and then just stop. I did that. I learned from that. I'm growing from that. And what I want to take home here is despite how well you're doing, we know you're doing well. Despite how well you're doing, there's always something that will get you to the point of discomfort. And it's your job and your job only to make sure you never, ever get to that point. That's why it's super important to have a savings and an emergency fund. That's why it's super important that your emergency fund has an emergency fund. That's why on top of your savings and your emergency funds, there should be a loss of income fund that has four months worth of paychecks just sitting in there. Now, of course, it'll take a while for you to build up to that point, but the intentionality you put behind it directly correlates with how quick you'll get it done. You gotta build a financial cushion. Above all else, living below your means is gonna be the most consistent and important thing that you do. As a 21 year old, fresh out of college, going into the real world by myself with a high paying job, with literally no knowledge on how to budget, how to save, or how to track my expenses, it was hard for me. And it was hard for me because I had to learn everything on my own from scratch as I was taking on a management role that I've never done before. And I definitely made some mistakes along the way. For example, compared to my salary, my rent was way, way, way too high. And I should have opted for a much smaller apartment. Instead, I decided to get a two-story townhouse with two and a half bathrooms and two bedrooms, which I never really even used. What's another mistake? I started investing way 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 too quickly i had a lack of knowledge and the lack of direction in terms of where my money should actually be going when it comes to investing and as a result i lost like 600 dollars per month for like a year straight so basically i put my money into all the wrong places and it didn't get me a step closer to my financial goals and this is a problem for a lot of people but i'm going to share it anyways i spent way too much money on eating out and those are my mistakes just to name a few but it wasn't all that bad though. I definitely got a valuable education from all the mistakes I've made and now I'm able to share these mistakes with you so you don't have to worry about making them. And even though I still think about the extra thousands of dollars I could have in my bank account right now if it weren't for those mistakes that I made, I still realize I did a lot of things right and I actually did live well within my means. I didn't go out and get a new car. I continued to drive the first car I ever got when I was 20 and it was already fully paid for. I didn't go out and get the latest iPhone at the time. The iPhone 10 had just got released and I was still walking around with the iPhone 7. I didn't really care about all the hype around the iPhone 10. To me, it, what was important is that I had a phone and I knew that I had money so I could get whatever phone I wanted, but it was just about the discipline for me at that time. I didn't really want any new tech at that time. And I didn't get any new shoes or clothes or anything. I didn't buy really anything for myself at all. Really just focused on saving and investing my money as a young 21 year old. <laughs> Another thing is I'm a single guy who lives alone. No roommates, no nothing. I've been living by myself since I was 20. So there was no need for me to go to the grocery store as much as everyone else was going. You know, all the families, everybody you see at the grocery store like every week or every other week. There was no point in me going that often. There just wasn't. So I found that going to the grocery store like once a month at the most was good enough. As a matter of fact, I challenge you, don't go to the grocery store at all for a whole month. I guarantee you, you'll still have plenty of food in your pantry, in your cabinets, whatever the case is. You're gonna have plenty to survive on without going to the grocery store. I think we've been conditioned by society to go to the grocery store as often as we do, it's really not that necessary. One time I tried not going for a full month, I still had plenty of rice, plenty of beans, plenty of chicken, plenty of everything that I needed to live a good, healthy lifestyle. But the problem was I was going every other week just because everyone else was. That was really the only reason I went. It wasn't because I really needed to go. I could be a little low on milk up, gotta go to the grocery store and buy everything that I still have in my kitchen. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Not financially, it doesn't. But seriously, there's a lot of stuff in our pantries and in our cabinets that just get overlooked on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. You go to the grocery store, you buy some more rice. You already have rice. 
And then you never even get to the one that's been sitting in there for God knows how long. Then you look at it and then it's expired. It takes forever for rice to expire. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's a shame right there. And what that leads to is a waste of your time going to and from the grocery store, but also it wastes your money because you're buying stuff that you don't need. And now you have an excess amount of rice, of beans, of frozen foods, of all kinds of stuff that you don't need, that you're probably not going to eat even a month from now. So you might as well just try what I'm saying. Don't go to the grocery store for a whole month. I guarantee you, you'll see one, you'll see savings and you'll see more money in your pocket. And two, that's more time on your hands to do productive, creative things to bring even more money into your life. That's the whole mindset shift though. I mean, I don't expect you to try it today and it comes natural because for me, it definitely did not come natural. Like I felt very uncomfortable doing it, but I was surprised at how well it worked. So give it a shot, why not? Here's a mindset shift for you. Think about how a frugal person thinks and acts and then implement that. And look, I know it sounds kind of weird, but trust me though, I'm not talking about being cheap either. You don't have to be this guy or this guy. God, I love that show. I'm talking about being smart with your money, not being cheap. Total difference. You see, we live in a world of what I call flex culture. We're surrounded by guys and girls who wanna flex on their exes or flex on people who said that they'd never amount to anything. So they buy the new car, they flaunt their salaries, they talk about how much money they have, they have the biggest houses, they get the nicest shoes, the list goes on and on. That's not frugal. Don't do that. That is not cold. That is weak. What Kendrick say in that one song? Sit down. Be humble. Slow down some. You're doing too much. That's the thing. People are doing too much. They, they get so caught up in flexing and showing people who's the boss that they end up losing themselves in the process. And then instead of them owning money, the money ends up owning them. That's not you. And it definitely isn't me. So we're not gonna act like that. We're not doing that. And look, trust me, I know it's tempting because there have been people in the past who have tried me, who have said what they've had to say, who have demeaned and belittled me. And now I i am what most people consider to be successful, but I'm not going to let that temptation override my goals that I have for myself and for my future family. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. As much as you might want to show somebody, hey, I'm successful, hey, I'm more successful than you, hey, I can buy this, hey, I can buy those new pair of shoes, I can buy this new car that you want, I can get your dream car today. You, you wanna say that, you wanna do that, but it's only gonna hurt you in the end. And this is how I think of it. Your ego should never be more important than your goals, ever. It's even the smaller things, like not letting the water run when you're brushing your teeth, stuff like that. It's using up all the milk that you have before you run to the grocery store and get a whole new carton of milk and neglect the one that you didn't even finish in the first place. It's putting more layers on when it's cold in your house instead of turning the heat on. Very simple easy mindset shifts that anyone can do. It's just a lot of people don't do it because they prefer convenience. All in all, frugal living is all about knowing how much you make, how much you owe, and how much you spend in a month. And I know that sounds incredibly simple, but hardly anyone is doing it. And once you start doing it, when you start doing it, people will definitely have a lot to say, especially when it comes to what you can do with your money and what you can afford with your money. You know the biggest thing I realized? Just because you can afford something does not mean that you go out and buy it. People are going to tell you, you can afford it. Go ahead, go ahead and buy that new. Go ahead and buy that. Buy that new house. Buy those new shoes. Buy that new $500 jacket. They're going to tell you those things. They'll give you a lot of recommendations and input in terms of what you could and should do with your money. And by they, I'm talking friends and family. Ask me how I know. Look here though, as much as it sucks to say what I've had to do and probably what you'll have to do is look at the results of the person who is giving advice, recommendations, or input in general about money. And if their results don't line up with your goals and your aspirations, that's not advice you should be following. And again, that's another thing I had to learn the hard way but that goes for anything in life. And that's why on this channel I say, 
You gotta be cold with your finances. I say that a lot. I usually say it at the end of my video, but the reason I say it so much is because people are going to look at you as if you're some cold, cruel person. But really when it, when it comes to being cold with your money and cold with finances, it means being sharp. It means being smart and intentional with your money. It means not giving a crap what people think about you, what they have to say about you. It's making those decisions that benefit you and your family the most. To put yourself in a position to actually be able to help people financially. That's what being cold with your money means. It's when somebody recommends that you do something with your money and you say, well, I'll take that into consideration, but then you don't do it. They might feel slighted because of it, but you gotta think about it this way. You gotta do what's best for you. I can give you all the advice in the world, but if I ever say anything on this channel that doesn't benefit you, that doesn't make sense for you to do, don't do it. I'm not gonna feel bad, bad about it at all, but some people are gonna be like, oh man, that person's just being cold and, and, and selfish and this and that. Nah, you're not, you're not like that. But anyways, that's the video for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance. So you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.